Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on monopsony power. Most students are familiar with the idea of monopoly, but relatively few have considered the other side of the market, monopsony. So let's get started. A monopsonist is a business that has buying or bargaining power in their market. And this buying power means that a monopsony business can exploit that and uh, bring down the cost of buying the inputs from a supplier. The reduced cost of purchasing raw materials, components, for example, that increases their profit margins. We find monopsony in both product and labour markets, but in our, in our example today, we're just going to focus on product markets. So here are some examples of monopsony power in action. In the power sector, the big electricity uh, generators can, can negotiate cheaper prices for their coal or gas supply contracts. The big food retailers have enormous buying power when purchasing their supplies from farmers, milk producers, wine growers and, uh, and other suppliers. Indeed, uh, the likes of Tesco and Sainsbury and Walmart and even the deep discounters such as Aldi and Lidl, they have oligopsony power because they are able to buy more cheaply from businesses at earlier stages of the supply chain. The, the price paid to milk farmers by the major supermarkets, of course, has been a major issue recently. A car rental firm, for example, might get a really favourable contract with a car maker to supply, let's say, 200 new cars for their fleet. And British Sugar is a business which buys almost the entire sugar beet crop produced each year in the UK. They've clearly got buying power. Amazon has huge buying power. It gets a, a better price than other booksellers. And this, of course, gives Amazon a significant competitive advantage. This advantage extends across many other markets because Amazon exploits economies of scope and, of course, sells a vast range of products on the Amazon platform. And the sixth example I'm giving you here is in the defence, is in the government um, spending sector. So rather like buying new defence equipment, uh, the NHS is a major buyer on behalf of the government when it's buying, for example, prescription drugs from the big pharmaceutical companies. And we'll come on to the importance of that in a second when we evaluate. So here are some examples of monopsony power in action. Now, what does it mean in terms of the consequences for businesses? What are the economic effects of monopsony power? Let's focus, first of all, on the businesses themselves, the monopsonists. Well, monopsony power, or buying power, is a type of internal economy of scale. So, in theory, it should bring down the long-term unit cost. That, of course, means that the business is set to make higher profits, and in theory, this will feed through to better returns for the company's shareholders. And another possible spillover effect is if the business is making more money, that could be used to finance and fund capital projects or research and development initiatives. There are, of course, some disadvantages of monopsony power. And we tend to focus on some of the businesses earlier on in the supply chain and the consequences for them. So a major topical example, one that's been in the news constantly in recent times, is the battle of the milk farmers to try and negotiate a price from the supermarkets or from the big milk processing businesses that actually covers the, the average cost of each pint or litre of milk they supply. The American economist Paul Krugman has been highly critical of Amazon and indeed, look at the quote he was uh, quoted as saying in October 2014. Amazon is acting as a monopsonist, a dominant buyer with the power to push prices down. By putting the squeeze on publishers, Amazon is ultimately hurting authors and readers. That's quite an interesting quote. One can take issue with it, but it does focus your evaluation a little bit on, this, on the possible long-term effects of monopsony. What about from the point of view of the consumer? Well, in theory, consumers should gain from monopsony power. Uh, the supermarkets, for example, can negotiate better prices for their, for their products and some of those lower costs might be passed on to consumers. I think the value for money arguments in the NHS is, is quite a powerful one. 
So the NHS spends billions of pounds every year on, on drugs. And if they can bring down the price of routine drugs, then that means for a given NHS budget, more people can be treated. There's also some evidence that the NHS is able to buy newly emerging drugs, for example, new cancer treatments, more cheaply than other high income countries. And that's partly because they are such a big purchaser of drugs. They have that market or that monopsony power. And keep in mind also uh, that uh, monopsonies can be a useful balancing item or counterbalance to the monopoly power of businesses, which could also help the consumer. I think fundamentally, this is about relationships. It's about relationships between uh, manufacturers and their suppliers, between retailers and their suppliers. And if you think about the supermarkets, for example, they've got big monopsony power. The, the long term sustainability of the milk industry or the cheese sector or the meat farming industry, it depends, it requires that both parties benefit, both the buyer of the products and also the sellers. So this has been a little look at monopsony power. It's not often uh, focused on by students. If you've made a distinction between monopoly power, which is selling power, and monopsony power, which is buying power, and if you can evaluate some of the consequences, then you won't go far along in your exams. Thanks for joining. See you again sometime soon.